is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You're listening to the Big Guy Sports Radio Show. Your home for New York sports. Guys, for the welcome morning. Oh my lord, I apologize. I'm a little flustered because the uh, connection got a little slow there and it uh, didn't let me go live with the video. So good morning to everybody. We are here for Wake Up With Football in New York, presented by the Big Guy Sports on Sunday, July 5th. And we will just chalk it up to everybody recovering from the 4th of July. <laughs> but the internet has not caught up yet because it's still giving me issues. But we are here. I am your host, Jim, with our co-host, Matt and Mac. Matt, how are you? How was working on the 4th of July until Lord only knows what hour? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's funny because you would figure that most people be doing cookouts and stuff like that. But there are people that come out and eat no matter what it is, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I worked la- uh, last night, made a few pizzas, cooked a few few, few uh, dinners and stuff like that. Not as busy as we normally are, but it was still – I still had to get up. I still had to go in there. And, and, and anybody that works in restaurants understands that, you know, if you're not working, you're cleaning. If you're not cleaning, you're, you're doing something else. So it's, it's, a, it's a physical job, but I enjoy it because it uh, – it, you, you feel like you accomplished something at the end of the day. Hey, if you, as long as at the end of the day you go home and you can pay your bills, it is what it is. Because somebody's right. got to pay them. That's right. Hey, hey, listen, I, I miss my restaurant days. Well, what do you, how about you, Matt? Did you uh, go out and enjoy your holiday and do stuff you're probably not supposed to do? I didn't go out. I stayed home and, uh, you know, just kind of kept it low-key, man, and did everything I was supposed to do, as a matter of fact, except wake up on time this morning, so... Here we are. Looking forward to a great show with you guys, man. Let's talk some football. Just give us an idea before we talk football of one thing you're actually supposed to do. Like, I'm curious. <laughs> On 4th of July or in general? Just because, go, well, in general, yeah. Like, is like a chore or something? Or I sat by the pool all day. I drank a lot of alcohol the most American way. And oh, I did thought other things you like grass or something. No, like, no, it's a holiday, man. You don't work on a holiday. What are you talking about? I don't know what Max is doing. It's <laughs> I'm working on a holiday. Max tried to pay the bills, man. That's what Max tried to do. <laughs> Max, First of my life, paid holidays, baby. I are early, then you can help me, like, around the clock, which you already do anyway. So, it'd be you know, just more time to have you with me. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, so we are live streaming on Facebook. And if you have any comments or questions, you can post them on Facebook, as always. Uh, appreciate if you'd support us. You can like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Big Guy Sports. Also, we finally put some videos up on YouTube. So, if you haven't subscribed already, you could go to the YouTube channel, The Big Guy Sports, which will just be used to reshow videos that we stream. We will have a separate YouTube channel and program coming by the before the end of July. But I put up the Big Sky Sports YouTube channel just to give people another way to go out there and just rewatch these videos. But it won't be for new content. We'll have a separate channel for that with a show and a name but it's fun and we are live i don't know if we are live on the stream yet on the app as the process the system is saying that there's an error so we're just live on facebook today it is what it is it is what it is i want to start with some i like to throw a little curveball at these guys and some late breaking news that they don't you know we're not talking about (laughs) or we're not prepared for so (laughs) Leonard Williams, Mm. uh, uh, Leonard Williams, my friend, my pal, my confidant, my man. (laughs) Uh, So Leonard Williams says that he deserves 18 to 20 million dollars a year. So currently him and the Giants are in a standoff because the Giants have until July 15th, I believe, to get a new contract worked out. Otherwise he just plays under what he has. Yes. July 15th. And the market says he deserves 12 to 14 million and he wants clowny money, 18 to 20 and the giants and him are far apart on an extension. Uh, Matt, I mean, am I missing something here? Did Leonard Williams have a Warren Sapp type year last year and I slept through it? 
Uh, you know, it wasn't for the Giants. If you did, maybe we did sleep through it. Last year uh, with the Giants, he went for 26 combined tackles, 13 assisted tackles. He had a half a sack. You know, he got pressure. That's what everybody says. That's everybody's justification for uh, Leonard Williams is, oh, he created pressure. He created chaos. Chandler Jones wants $20 million a year, and he had 53 tackles. He had 19 sacks. He destroyed offenses, okay? Leonard Williams is no Chandler Jones, all right? And so if he thinks that the Giants have any reason to pay him anything more than no, I wouldn't even pay him $10 million a year because he didn't do anything to deserve $10 million a year. I'd let him walk before I paid him any kind of money like that. Third I, round, can he walk now? I mean, we've already got him signed for this year, right? I mean, we offered him a tag. I think it's like a tag. We'll pay him the tag, fine, which I still think is just too much money for even one year unless he's going to come in there and wreck. But, uh, you know, Mac, after this year, I think we just let him walk. Hey, been- listen, uh, listen, Jim, I think that, that uh, Leonard – Leonard Williams is trying to get Javon. What is it? Clowney's money, right? He's trying to get that kind of money. He's money, yeah, which Clowney can't even get. So you that know. there goes my point. So I mean, listen, he is his motor runs. He's aggressive. He's a, he's a good leader out there, but he's nowhere compared to to one of the best defensive linemen in the league. Casey, I give him credit. They had a better defense than we did, and that's part of the thing too. I mean, our defense was was terrible last year. So, I mean, maybe under a, dif- a different defensive coordinator, maybe he'll shine a little bit more. But if I was a Giants and come the end of the year, I would just say, see you, you know, have, have a good life. Good luck to you. Good luck. So you're ready to cut bay. I mean, we've talked about this guy like several times over the past two months. And I told you it was a terrible trade before, before they even made the, you know, before they even offered him the tag. And now look at the situation, get him in. And I, 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 I told you, I've stayed positive on Gettleman, you know, for the most part. But look at the situation Gettleman has gotten himself in by now being forced to try to keep this guy just to save face. I mean, you have to – if you think about it, Mac, I mean, there's a lot of this is just saving face at this point, you know? Well, I believe, I believe Gettleman, with the way the system was in the past couple of years, as far as free agents go – He's a great draft analyst. He's, he's great at scouting players. He signed some big drafts. But I think he was signing out of fear. I mean, he's trying to work out that plug-and-play kind of thing where, well, we still have a chance to contend, so let's get somebody here that that, that is, is good and solid. And, and even if we give up that draft choice, maybe our record improves during that year. But that, that just doesn't work. Our team was not good enough to do something like that. When you sign a free agent – you're looking for that one guy to put you over the top, that one threat that makes a solid team really good. We aren't we aren't that level yet. So I think Gettleman did this out of fear, I think under some kind of pressure maybe, and, and it was just a bad move. Yeah, this is just spiraled out of control to the point where now, you know, he's got to do whatever he can do to save face because let's be honest with you, as much as he creates some pressure – they probably should have just cut ties with him after the season, but Gettleman was never going to do that because he gave up so much. I mean, he gave up a three and a, a five for a guy mm-hmm. that never achieved what he was supposed to achieve. And now the guy wants more money. If I was Gettleman, just accept what it is. Let him pay this, you know, let him play this year under the tag and just let him walk. Cut your losses. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's just, it's just okay. But on another note, on the Giants, aside from Leonard Williams, the good news is, and I'm completely shocked by this, and I'm going to stick to my initial reaction that he's still not coming here because I just I find it hard to believe. We are 10 days away from Golden's contract with the Giants automatically kicking it and him being a Giant for only four point one whatever million dollars. And t- I said from the beginning, there's no way some team would not swoop in and pay him one year, six million or something like that. Right. And here we are 10 days away and he's closer and closer to actually becoming a giant. And if you look at the situation, Matt, the that's how ridiculous this is. Golden, who led the giants in sacks last year, mm-hmm. 10, 10 and a half, somewhere in that range yep. is only going to get paid for something in change unless someone swoops in and signs him. But you have to think at this point, even if they did swoop in and sign him, it's going to be five, six, seven million. It's not going to be like 15, yeah. 16. And Leonard Williams won 18, 18 to 20. 
So are you yeah. shocked that Golden is still not – that nobody has stepped up at such a cheap price to grab him, knowing all it takes is $5 million and he's coming there instead of here? A couple of things about Golden is that he wants to be a starter, obviously. Mm-hmm. And you have to think about the situation he might be in, what team would sign him to be a starter. And will they sign him to starter money? Is this been has these conversations been happening? We don't know. As far as the Giants are concerned, I would much rather invest closer to 10, 15 million in a guy like Marcus Golden, who's proven he can get double digit sacks in the season, which he did his rookie year, which he then he missed another year, then he down year, back to double digit sacks with the Giants. So uh as far as him not signing with anyone's concerned, I think somebody's gonna try to swoop in there last minute, kind of like, you know. Like a Patriots would do, you know how they love to do it. They wait till the last minute, they'll come in there and just pull the rug out from under you. The Giants would be it would be very ill advised for them to let him walk. The good thing is the Giants defense was so bad last year that nobody really put too many eyes on a guy like Golden, to be honest, because it was really like polishing a turd, if you will. You know? It's just nobody wants to look at anybody on the Giants defense. They don't care. They yeah. pull off you know, so they're just they're gonna keep moving. I hope he comes back, man, because the Giants could really use him. They could really use him. Well, I want him back. I mean, you know, I've said a million times that I thought there's no way he just gets let to go to the Giants for four million. You have to think somebody's gonna swoop in here at the last minute and make him a better offer, right? I mean, four point one million for a guy, or I might I might have the number wrong. It might even be three point something million for a guy who had ten sacks. Well, not only that, I mean, he's been talking to judges. Judges have been having conversations with Golden, too. I mean, look, this guy is not just a, a sack artist. I mean, he is an emotional leader on the field. He was the only, really only bright spot, that uh, standout bright spot last year for the Giants. Um, mm-hmm. I think even if a team comes in and offers a middle a couple million, I think the Giants would probably match that. I mean, to have that on the outside, you know, they got Frackle now and they got, you know, they got tons of linebackers, but no proven leader out there on the field on the outside like Golden. So I would imagine the Giants would match, at least match any offer unless it's ridiculous. And I think they're going to hold on to him. And that's going to be a big part of our pass rush next year. Mm-hmm. They can still give him a deal. You know, I think they, they could very well still give him a deal. If somebody comes in and offers them a couple a couple million dollars more, they say, okay, we can add – three and a half, four million dollars to keep this guy. Yeah, you have to pull the trigger on that, especially if you're trying to get him and can do that to save face on the Leonard Williams trade. You know? All right, well he re-signed Golden Cool. I'll take him back any of the Giants have to have that guy. We don't have a pass rush without him. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, let's give a couple shout outs here a good morning to Kevin, our resident, one of our Dallas fans. My boy. <clears throat> him and Justin Shepard are Dallas fans. And uh, a shout out to uh Justin, our Best, biggest fan, <laughs> Jet fan. Justin is here as always. Um, so talking about the Giants, just on some other, you know, news and notes going around as we get closer and closer to getting ready. Um, we still don't have an update on Baker, but according to reports, a lot of people feel like at this point, like Baker is going to stick with the Giants. That seems to be what's going around media these days. Mm -hmm. But they also feel he's still going to get a suspension from the league. So you're probably looking at two to four weeks without Baker is what seems to be going around. So, you know, that's going to hurt at the start, not only because of the fact that he's going to miss two to four weeks, but then you factor in on top of that, that since they're not allowing him to come and work out yet and they're not allowing him to be with the team yet in person, um, Baker's also going to have the problem of he's not going to know the system completely yet unless he does all of a job study in the book because this is going to be a new defensive system, you know, totally new defensive staff. So Baker, you're probably looking at six to seven weeks total before he's ready to go to, to even jump on the field as a starter. And that's going to hurt the Giants, Mac. I mean, that's, you know, that's going to hurt. I don't care what you say. You could say we have a ton of young corners, but Baker was the guy we took in the first round. He was yeah. the guy that's supposed to eventually mold into that lockdown corner. You know, I, I really it, – it's all speculation. I mean, we don't even – they haven't even dropped the charges yet. We, we don't know what's going to happen there. I don't think the NFL is going to do anything until there's word on what's going to happen with that or the Giants for that matter. Mm-hmm. And like I said before, I would imagine that he's on 
He's he's on Skype or whatever, and he's he's got uh, he's got the playbook. He's uh, he's talking to the coaches behind the scenes, and 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 maybe not the head coach, but maybe some position coaches. He's talking to the players, I would imagine. And you know, I mean, what what are, what are they doing right now? I mean, they don't start what practice till 30, 30 July. Am I saying the date right? I think until they all come together, right? Yeah. Mm. So I mean, he's still got almost a whole month yet for the for the uh, justice system down there in Florida to make a decision. And then we'll see what the uh, what the league does and we'll see what the Giants do. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we should keep this guy. I think he's a great football player. I think he's young and a little – maybe a little ignorant to some of the things outside uh, football. But uh, as far as parties and that stuff goes. But, hey, less, lesson learned, hopefully, and, and we have him this year. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Matt, I'll touch base on a different subject with you because we have – talked a lot about Baker and hopefully we'll get to talk some more about him because something will break on that side of the story soon. Um, you know, looking at the, you know, the giants for this season, I think we're the, we're the, we're the biggest fan boys of them all <laughs> because I've been looking, you know, I've done a lot of research and been looking around to try to find where a lot of the other sites and shows are ranking the giants this season. And, you know, we remember when we did our quick predictions, you know, nine and sevens. And we, we, a lot of us had eight and eight, nine, seven. No other site has them above five, six wins. So, you know, there's not a lot of and the more and more I read about it, the more and more it makes sense. Like I've ten, I've started to trend towards believing them and thinking we've all lost our minds because yeah. just because you be honest with you, if you take being Giants fans out of the equation, oh. there's a lot of question marks on the team. And to go ahead hey. nine and seven, we're asking every single question mark to turn our way in our favor. And it never turns out that way. You Are know, we though, Jim? Are we asking question marks? Oh, yeah, to let's, turn? Look, let's look at this. You're asking, here are things that have to happen for the Giants to even potentially go eight and eight, nine and seven. Andrew Thomas and Xavier McKinney probably need to step in right away and not only start, they need to be solid starters. Can't Feasible. Come- can't okay. didn't have Baker struggles like he had the first 12, mm-hmm. 15 weeks. Blake Martinez has to be more than just a tackling machine. He's got to cover better. He's got to do other things. Bradbury's got to play exactly as advertised. He's got to mm-hmm. be that lockdown corner. He can't, like, have a bad year and turn into more of, like, a number two type corner because we don't have a backup. So, I don't know. I mean, maybe we're stretching – I mean, I always said before we even got on the show that if the Giants won seven games, I thought, well, that's an improvement. How is how can you not be happy going from four to seven? Right. Absolutely. That would be an improvement. That would be a drastic improvement, especially under a new coaching staff. Fact of the matter is, what would give you any indication that James Bradbury won't play as, indi- as advertised? He's done it consistently with a similar front. I mean, Carolina, I believe, obviously has better linebackers than we have had in the last decade and a half and more. Uh, but I think Bradbury don't undersell the significance of a lockdown corner, man. That can change your entire defense. That can change your entire defense, your entire scenario. And that's what we have now. That's a guy I've, I've brought it up before. He played the best. Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, Godwin, Julio Jones. Yeah, but that's just Ridley. one guy. What about the four yeah. other question marks I gave you? All right, well, let's look at it. Let's look at Andrew Thomas, Xavier McKinney. Got to stop stepping and be solid. You said he can't have those Baker-like struggles. You're right. But they're also not playing cornerback in the NFL. All right, that's a whole other ball game. A cornerback struggling his rookie year. I get it, but Andrew Thomas is probably going to start at right tackle to start the season if he's going to start. I do. (laughs) All right. Um, I, I feel what you're saying. I, everything it's, not, you're saying. it's not outside of the realm of reality or possibility to assume that those two guys, McKinney and Thomas, are going to step in and play well off the jump. Okay? It's not outside the realm of reality to assume that. Uh, I think Peppers is going to come back. I think Peppers is going to have a great year. I think that with the depth we have in the secondary now is going to be a key for that. We just got to work on that pass rush, get Golden back in there, get guys moving. Lorenzo Carter needs to step it up. Um, as far as the offense is concerned, I think we're going to have a very, very good offense this year, man. I think Daniel Jones is going to take it to the next level. Darius Slayton, Golden Tate, 
Sterling Shepard, and of course, our boy Saquon Barkley. All, all I'm saying is there's a question a mark. Is Saquon Barkley a question mark? Absolutely not. Uh, no, I mean, the offensive line will dictate Saquon Barkley, but Kevin says we've lost our minds, and I, I hate to say yeah. it, but the more and more I read every day, Seriously, I think he's right. The Giants, I think I'm switching. They're a seven-win team at best. Too many question marks that you guys are all putting in the plus column. They're one of those teams. You're going to name 20 question marks, and you two will just tell me they're all going to work out. This never works that way. It never works that way. We can break it down if you want to break it down. The fact of the matter is. I'll break it down. Giants, I'm just simply telling you that we are the only show on the Internet, whether if you want to count, Magazine publications, you want to count. Now, check them all. Newspaper publications, we're the only one that had them with a winning record. So we're what out of like 30 different places. When you say you're on the ledge on your own, Mac, we're the only one on that ledge. We have So, no- so we're the smartest show on the air. So what, the- what, what can I tell you? Listen, <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. I base my, my the record of the Giants not on players. We all look at the players. We we say, oh my God, you know this one's this one's going to get you know this player. They, we, they just sign this player. Listen, I don't care what your player is. I'm looking at your coaching staff. The coaching staff the Giants build on the offseason. Mark Colombo, uh, uh, our new offensive coordinator, Gary, our new uh, defensive line coach. I mean, and our new head coach. He has put together one of the most organized. Uh, uh, coaching uh, uh, draft that I've ever seen. That's our draft, guys. That's our draft this year. That's our signings this year. This is what's going to make the Giants team solid from the jump. This is not. This is not. They all have connections to each other. They all have working relationships with each other. They've coached together in the past. All these coaches know each other. Know how each other works. Know how each other coaches. There is not a lot of coaching staffs out there like this. So. For a new coaching staff with all this experience, with all this expertise, with all this success coming together under one coach is why I think the Giants will be a very solid 8-8, eight and eight, possibly a 9-17. and 17. We were picking games based off probability, not guarantees. So the, the teams we line up against that we have a shot at beating, I think it's very likely that we're at least going to finish 8-8 eight and eight this year. I'm going to tell you something out there, people. I'm the one of the biggest fanboys in the world for my teams, and the Big Guy Sports Network is in trouble when I'm the only one that's realistic. It's in a lot of trouble. We're in a lot of trouble, people. Realistically, Jim, the Giants are one of those teams that are just a couple plays away next year. They'll be one of those teams that's a couple plays away from either being seven and nine or nine and seven. It's going to be one of those. It's going to be one of those margin of victories that's below a point or below a point and a half. All year long, it's going to be one of those years where they squeak out some wins they're not supposed to win. Like we've seen a six-win Giant team beat a 12-13 win Kansas City team. We've seen them beat the Bears when they had the great defense. Like we beat them 12-6. to We're not supposed to win these games, you know. But then we go drop to Jacksonville or Miami or Cleveland, you know. I don't, I don't understand, but here we are, and I, I, that's really what it's going to be with the Giants. It's going to be either 7-9 and nine or 8-8, eight and eight, and it's going to be a couple plays that make that difference. Yeah, we'll find out. I feel like I'm about to ask you guys a question that I already know the answer to because you all are so high on the Giants right now. But I'll ask it anyway because that's my job. So they were talking about with one of the reporters from the New York Post about how Joe Judge, you know, he has a five-year contract. And – One of the things the Giants used to do is they used to be a franchise that when they hired a coach, they were very patient. They were one of those franchises, didn't like to change coaches all the time, and they haven't done that lately. McAdoo was out pretty fast. Um, Shermer was out. McAdoo and Shermer both did two years. Two years, Shermer, less than two years for McAdoo. And the guy was asked, do you think that Joe Judge will last the five years? And he had mentioned that. Mara met, said when they signed Judge that I need to learn to be more patient. I can't continue to just bring in a coach and let him go. Now, with the other two, I I felt like he brought in the wrong coach. So there was no problem letting him go. Like McAdoo is dopey and probably couldn't coach the local JV team. And Shermer had a career of just never winning. So it didn't make any sense. I mean, you brought in a guy who'd never shown he can win at any level. Um, but with Judge, he's 38 years old. So I guess I'll start with you, Mac. Judge is 
Give me your prediction. Does Judge make it through the five years? And if so, is it because you think he makes it longer? Forget Super Bowls. Just do you think they can show patience with a young coach and let him build where he needs to get to? Well, well, first, what Mara said there isn't totally true. I mean, he has uh, tried to get rid of coaches in the past. He almost got rid of Parcells, believe it or not, after his first year. So, I mean, th- it, it all depends on – it all depends on the personality. It all depends on how how the team if, – if it's moving forward. If by the third year we're in the playoffs, if we're competing, if we're strong, then, yeah, of course he's going to keep them. And, and I, I would think that hopefully he waits to three years. As far as McAdoo goes, good offensive quarter. Shermer, good offensive coordinator. Um, to make a jump like that in a lot of cases is very difficult for coordinators. It, it, it just – just in general. I mean, normally defensive coordinators have success. Special team coaches like, like Pittsburgh and, and Joe Judge here, they, hopefully they have success They have success because they coach the whole team and win the whole team in, in, in their area. So, I mean, Mara, what Mara is saying sounds great. He's got another owner there by the name of Tish that might have something to say about that. But Tish, um, he don't care about that. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, he does have a partner there now. So, But what Mara said is not totally true, guys. He, I mean, he got one. He was ready to get rid of one of the greatest head coaches in the history of football. Uh, he also didn't hire one of the greatest coaches in in history of football. So, I mean, it sounds great that he says that. Hopefully, he talking about Belichick. Yeah, can hopefully, I, can I say something about Belichick real quick before I pass it to Matt because. I'm going to disagree with the. I don't have any problem with them not keeping Belichick because you know what? You know what I want to see from Belichick this year? And we're going to talk a little bit later about Cam Newton. I want to see what Belichick does without Brady because everybody uh, around. Hold on a second. Hear me out. Well, yeah, hear me out. I'm part of the giant secret society where you get to go back <laughs> and, and, a cape and you got to be careful. With the They're not going to let you in the door to drink the pig's blood you got to drink for the annual, you know, fest. But if Belichick, I want to see what Belichick can do. I understand he's going to the Hall of Fame and he's already going to be the greatest coach of all time. But I want to see what he does without Brady. Because I see that's why I don't look at it as the Giants lost out because I don't know if Bill Belichick would have put the same amount of Super Bowls up if he had to do it that all the time with Eli instead of Brady. You know what I mean? Like Brady's good. Eli's average. Now, did, you, did you watch did you watch the Patriots the first two years that, that Tom Brady was a quarterback? They, he wasn't the passing all over the field. They were running I the ball. Playing that, but I'm saying it plays you, a factor. They were good with Bledsoe too before. Did you, you, know. did you watch? Did you watch when Castle played quarterback the whole year for the Patriots? Yeah, and they went they, eleven. They, and they, they, wait a minute. Check in Cleveland. And they went eleven and five. All right. What Listen, about Cleveland? Cleveland was was just a startup thing. It was just getting this stuff together. For and they sure. did have and they did have a winning season. And and they did end up in the playoffs one year, if you remember correctly. Listen, Bill Belichick would have continued on down the Parcells path. We would have had another five Super Bowls in our collection right now. I'm telling you, Jim, we would have had another five Super Bowls in our collection right now if they just stuck with the Parcells plan and and hired Belichick and he wanted the job at New York. It was a ridiculous move by Mara and Young at the time. And and, and it was just it was crazy. They did the same thing with with Tom Landry and and, and uh, Vince Lombardi back in the day too when Mara was the owner. Those we could have had head coaches too. So I don't want to hear Mara coming out right now and saying, oh well we're gonna give him some time. I don't want to hear that from him. Just let the thing play. You give him some time. And I just want to say Tom Coughlin, I love you. Mac doesn't, but I love you. He wanted you, Tom Belichick. Conklin. Tom, he wanted Belichick. So when you come on, Tom, it'll just be me and Matt. All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. No. Okay. On the Joe Judge thing, on the five years, being thirty-eight years old, I think if anyone has what we've seen so far off the field from Joe Judge indicates that he has the character and the, the the know-how and the experience to last five years as a Giants coach. But what has to happen is he has to show progress. There has to be progress. You have to win more games oh, every year going time. forward. So he's going to be great. <laughs> if they if they go – even if they go seven and nine this year, eight and eight, which they have a favorable schedule to be able to do that, right? Mm. It's progress. But they will give him a chance if he makes progress. They're gonna. They want to follow that model, that three-year model. He's gonna have at least three, I believe. At least three, he's gonna have. All right, and and from then, from that point, they'll reevaluate, see where we're at. Are we winning ten games by our third year? Are we getting 
close to the playoffs by our second year? You know, are we are we making the steps needed in terms of character, in terms of building the foundation of the team? Those things are going to matter. And I think Joe Judge is the right guy for the job with the experience he has being a special teams coordinator under two of the greatest coaches to ever do it, Saban and Belichick. You know, that doesn't go by the wayside for nothing. They kept him around for a long time for a reason. And we're lucky to have him as our head coach. I'm glad they didn't go bring in another offensive coordinator that nobody ever heard of. Can I go out on a limb and say that I think he'll be here for eight years? No, I mean, all right. I would love that. I would love that. But that's so rare in this league. You know, it's so hard to stay in a place that long anymore. Um, Right. Well, Tomlin got his spot in the days when, you know, you would be basically grandfathered in, you know, back in the mid 2000s, early 2000s, late 90s. Those guys got to keep their jobs for a decade and a half. Now you can win 10 games three years in a row and then you go seven and nine. Your butt is out of there. Right. You know, so. That's just the way it is. They want instant gratification now from their head coaching this position. Is this is true. But I do have one more question for you, Matt, before I move on from the Giants. Uh, just a quickie. Who do you feel is a candidate for a better second season with the Giants? Ryan Connolly, the linebacker, or tight end Caden Smith? You guys only give me one. I'm going to go with Caden Smith. I'm going to go with Caden Smith, namely because Connolly's going to come off the ACL. He already had a knee injury at Wisconsin in uh, college, so we don't know how he's going to come back from that. If his short-range quickness is going to be the same, you know, he plays really good in a box, Connolly. He can move, bomb, 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 bomb. He's there, so we don't know how that knee is going to hold up. I think Caden Smith is going to have a lot of PT this year. He's going to be a big part of the offense, especially with Jason Garrett, the way he has it laid out. Uh, Evan Ingram bound to get hurt, miss a couple games, and it's Caden Smith's show after that. And he showed out at the end of last year. I think he's going to be the guy. I got to tell you, fans, uh, you got to give props to Matt because he really has his stats down pat. I'm not going to. I think sometimes he goes to sleep with headphones on where like <laughs> he pushes the notes in his head because I throw some of these questions I throw at him. I don't tell him they're coming. So he, <laughs> you me. I just throw them out there and he he pulls out Wisconsin and Connolly and I couldn't. I didn't know where Connolly went to college. But, um same question, Matt. Mac, before we move on, uh, you agree with Smith over Connolly? Who has the better? That doesn't mean they both can't have a good second season. Yeah. But who takes the biggest second year jump? Well, just I, I'd go along with Matt just because Connolly, before he got hurt, what he had four interceptions and he was leading the tackle in teams. I mean, the guy is, is definitely a stud if he's healthy. So, uh, yeah, Caden Smith's the newest guy. He showed us some good stuff at the end of the year, he's got some hands. Kind of uh, Jason Witten, kind of get open kind of guy. So I, I, I'm going to go along with Matt on that. I wouldn't be surprised if Caden Smith has a big jump this year, and then you kind of see the Giants, even though they already picked him up for next year, trade Ingram. Because Caden Smith just kind of might fit the mold better of the type of tight end. Because, you know, because Ingram plays more like a wide out. He doesn't block a lot. He doesn't stay healthy a lot. Caden Smith doesn't have the – the the speed abilities of you know of uh the other tight end but but he's more of a blocker but can also get open Witten Witten was never Witten didn't get down the field and get open because he was a speedster he was just great in the routes great at his cuts and he always knew where to be he knew where the quarterback was going to want to can I say that um you can't let Evan Ingram walk I don't care what anybody says that guy is too good and too young despite the health issues I think we can He's got to do something to get healthy, stay healthy. He's got to fix his diet. He's got to call call Eli, see what Eli used to do. I don't know what Evan Ingram used to do, but he's got to stay healthy because you have to have two tight ends, two viable tight end options in, this, in the offense these days. You have to, especially Jason Garrett's offense. And if it's outside of Evan Ingram and Caden Smith, we got some guys that can play tight end, play okay, and, you know, inline blocker type dudes and – but if we could have Caden Smith and Evan Ingram, man, running two wide tight end sets, Evan Ingram can split out, play wide receiver. You got to keep that guy. You got to keep him healthy, and you got to get him in the right situations to succeed. Yeah. Like Ryan says he loved how consistent Caden Smith was last season. Great insurance. And I love Ingram too, Matt. Mm-hmm. I'm with you on that. I'm just saying is that for Ingram, like Al just mentioned, it's all about health. And if Ingram gets hurt again this year – and he's four years in a row. If he can't get through a whole season, at some point you get as an organization. At some point, you get frustrated. Yeah. What are you going to invest in him at this point? Yeah, because you already picked him up for next year, so he's not leaving. Hey guys, 
Guys, the best ability is availability. Remember that. I don't care how great you are. If you can't get on the field. Fine. You're supposed to say Al said it before you. You know, you know what I mean? I mean, you you, 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 you got to realize this. Listen, uh, Ingram is a great talent. He gets hurt all the time. I mean, can you use him as a wide receiver with the wide receiving core you got already? I don't know. I mean, we can use a fullback more. Uh, we can use Penny more and catching the ball. We got Saquon. We got Lewis now who can catch the ball. So we got other options besides – you know, a, a pass catching tight end out there. So if he if he can't stay healthy this year, I, I'm sorry, but as much as I think he's good, he could be great. Well, yeah, he wouldn't be letting him walk anyway because they already picked him up for next year. Mm-hmm. So if they weren't going to have him on the team next year, they would be trading him. But I agree with Matt. Also, I definitely wouldn't give the guy away if that's how it turns out. If it turns right. out he gets hurt, I'm not going to trade him for a five because he always gets hurt because he's too talented. And I just want to add one note, and we are going to move to other stuff that. I have big expectations for Ryan Connolly. I know we only show a short sample, but what we saw looked really good. And he looked like one of those guys that finally the Giants found someone that was kind of a steal in the draft that played well above his pick. So mm. not to get crazy into it, but I just feel like I have big expectations for Connolly Damn. and I think big things for him. So on that note, a uh, lot of other things. I want to just say good morning to everybody listening in. You know, to Al, to Ryan, to Michael, to Ruben, to Kevin, to Justin, and anybody else who's out there listening in, we appreciate your comments, and we do see them. I did see your question, Kevin, about do you think we have a season this year? I'm going to cover that at the end of the show rather than in the middle. Um, Al brought up, just to add to that last conversation as we get ready to move on, that San Diego let go of Schottenheimer when he had a great record, <clears throat> which is very true. Sometimes coaches just get let go because them and the GM just start not seeing eye to eye, and then the record's out the window. You need a fresh uh, start sometimes. Yeah, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, But everybody, thank you for coming and listening and giving some comments. Uh, just to give everybody an update, this is the Big Guy Sports Radio Network. We are live Mondays and Tuesdays, 4 to 6, Wednesdays, 5 to 7, Saturday and Sunday, 8.30 to 10.30. Saturday is baseball. Sunday is football. During the week, we talk about everything. You could like us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Big Guy Sports, and you can also find us on LinkedIn, or you could check us out at www.TheBigGuySports.com. And that was free advertising because I don't get paid to say that. So... (laughs) As we move on to the next thing, let's hop around the NFL a little bit. Let's talk about Chris Jones. I know I didn't provide something on this this yesterday, but I do know that Matt asked me to bring this up a few days ago. Uh, Chris Jones, Kansas City Chiefs, third in the league in sacks, Mm 15.5 sacks last season, third, uh, has hinted that he will hold out until he gets a new contract and went as far as on Twitter to say, LeVon Bell told me about this. Uh-uh. So he's cool. he, he only had nine last year. <laughs> so, Matt, we'll get to you first. Is LeVon Bell a good inspiration for people? Le'Veon Bell is not a good inspiration for your contract talks because you, what happened to Le'Veon Bell, he held out for extra, extra long and lost money. He went to the Jets for less money than he would have made to, if he had signed – the contract, okay? So Le'Veon Bell cost himself money. That's his own doggone problem. Now, the thing about Chris Jones is Chris Jones had 15 and a half sacks in 2018. He only had nine sacks last year. All right, now granted, that's because he had 15 and a half sacks in 2018 and teams started obviously double and triple teaming him, chipping him with the tight end, with the running back. They game plan for him at that point. The dude's a record. The dude is a record. The, the Kansas City was not winning the Super Bowl without that guy. That guy is a leader. He is just a monster on the field. He's 26 years old, man. And the Chiefs would be well served to really just go ahead and pay him. He's a guy that's worth $20 million. If he wants $20 million, you give that kind of guy $20 million because he's going to go get it from someone else. And he's going to come in there and he's going to wreck your team for years and years and years. He's that kind of talent and he's that good. Mac. Um, if you know, if you need advice on a contract, are you reaching out to Le'Veon Bell? Of course I am. I mean, who else would I talk to, right? I mean, <laughs> hey, listen, uh, Chris Jones is great, great defensive tackle. Um, when it comes to money and holding out and stuff like that, there's there's a couple things that that might get in his way. 
First of all, they're going to be trying to sign Mahomes to a long, big contract when that thing comes up. And as a GM, you're going to have to try to um, try to distinguish how much some people are worth compared to how much the other players around them that they're going to need to win again. Because when Mahomes goes there, he's going to get basically anything he wants. And they're still going to have to sign some players around him, and they're still going to have to keep some players around him for that support. So I, I don't think Chris Jones is going to get any kind of uh, – uh, a sign deal until they take care of Mahomes first and see what happens. After. You always pay the quarterback first. This is the way. That's the way the league is. It's a quarterback I, league. It always has been. But they've got what two years before they have to sign Mahomes. Yeah, I can't. So, I'm going down to the wire though. I can I, see him getting paid yeah. after this year. The thing about I mean, Jones is they'll settle around sixteen, seventeen a year, which is more than fair for him. You still got a pretty good tight end that you're going to have to sign too. And, okay, so I mean, you know, you're going. This is this is where the GM is very important to the team on who you're going to keep, who you're going to let go, who's the best. Uh, uh, you know, what's the best deal for the dollar? So all these things are going to be coming up. That the Chiefs are going to remain relevant if they're going to re- remain competitive. Um, Holmes will get part of the team if he wants, for God's sakes. He's he's that a good of a quarterback. So I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of decisions that got to be made. The uh, new salary cap's going to come up, and it's going to oh, go up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, what, is, what do the Chiefs want to do? Who do they want to keep? Jones may be that, maybe one of them guys, and he may be like third or fourth down on the list. So. It's going to be interesting to see. Well, just to highlight, as I had mentioned before, Jones last year ranked third in the NFL with 15.5 sacks. And if you all remember the Super Bowl, he also had that key play in the game when he pressured the quarterback, forcing that interception. That was a huge play in that game, especially when that, you know, when that game was really tight and on the line. So um, he's a good guy to sign. I could see him getting signed. I just, I just found it funny that he was talking it, you know, he's quoting Le'Veon Bell. Like I wouldn't quote Le'Veon Bell to teach me at a, Wash my mm. car just because I love you, Le'Veon. But I mean, you know, as Matt had already touched base on, you know, you held out and then you took a lot less money. And you looked like, and no disrespect to him, he looked like he lost a little step last year. Now, a lot of people say, oh, that was the offensive line. And we're obviously not talking about Bell, but we're going to find out this year. We're going to find we out. Last he needs year to step it up. Was what he is now? Or if that was just, we'll just blame it all on the line, you know? So um, uh, Al mentions that. Aaron Donald is at an average of 22.5 a year. How much less of a player is Chris Jones? Not that much less, according to last year's stats. But I feel like Aaron Donald has a bigger – has done it over multiple years. I feel like he's got right. a body of work. So you're talking yeah, about – Yeah, I don't know if they're in the same realm right now. I mean, they're in, they're close. Jones is good, but he's not in the same ballpark as Aaron Donald, in my opinion. But back to the original point of Le'Veon Bell, like you originally stated, don't take contract advice from a guy that lost himself a bunch of money just because he wanted to be a, 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 a silly, you know, he wanted to be a, a hard headed, a knucklehead. So mm-hmm. yeah. Ryan made a good point though. Ryan says Chris Jones will get paid. He'll have an easier time getting paid than bell because of his positional value, which I have to agree with them because the, the, there's a lot of, I do think Jones will get paid and with the cap going up, I think they can afford Mahomes and mm-hmm. right end. And, and Jones, because Jones does play a position where you've seen it right now. I mean, look how many teams are starved for sacks. Yep. Yep. Very important position right now. I think he'll get paid. I've seen some Giant fans try to be overzealous on Facebook, like like sharing articles that some sites wrote about, oh, Giants in a position to trade for Jones. Yeah. Trade who? What are you, what are you trading for him? You, okay, well, if they'll t- hey, listen, if they'll take Leonard Williams, sold, I do it tomorrow. <laughs> right, I'm telling you. Leonard Williams, because Leonard <laughs> The only one who thinks he should be paid like Jones. Nobody else in reality thinks that. And then you trade for him, and then then you still got to pay him. So I mean, you know, you can do whatever you want to. You still got to pay them, man. People, we we got room to pay people right now. Uh, yeah, we, we have some cash to spend. Yeah, we've got a little bit. I mean, we're tight against the cap, but we don't have any long term lockups at the moment, except for Bradbury and a, a few others. So so anyway, that's what's going on with. Uh, with over in Kansas City. Uh, another guy, a lot of unhappy players right now. Wanting money, wanting contracts. So let's stay down the line of people who are upset. Cleveland tight end, David Njuko. Did you, I said his name wrong. I butchered a hurricane. I'm going to hell for that. Anyway, <laughs> three years old. Uh, the Browns want to keep him, but his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, told the team he wants out. 
Now, I had this conversation with people the other day, and a lot of people said based on the other people they've brought in, he's not going to get enough touches, so he doesn't want to be there. Um, Sources say that he might be worth a fourth or fifth round pick only. Tight ends are so devalued in this league. So the Browns went ahead in the offseason, and they signed Austin Hooper to a four-year, $44 million deal with $23 million guaranteed. They drafted a tight end in the fourth round, Harrison Bryant. He's a uh, new coach. They have uh, Kevin Stefanoski values tight ends and said he could see playing all three. But my man sees the writing on the wall that you don't give a tight end, you know, four years, $44 million to not get a lot of touches. You drafted another tight end. He feels disrespected and dropped down the chart, and he wants out. Um, I kind of – you know me. I'm not one to always take the player's side on things, and maybe you could call me because he's a Hurricane a little fanboy here, and that's fine. But I kind of <laughs> feel for the guy because, I mean, you know, you're there. You know, you're trying to grow with the team. You're only 23 years old. And then they smack you across the face and go sign somebody for four years, $44 million. I mean, yeah. maybe go on to greener pastures, right? I mean, Matt, time to move on and find a new home. Yeah, for sure for him because the fact of the matter is he's underperformed since being drafted in the first round out of Miami's in 2017. He started all 16 games his first two years, 16 and 17. Um, the fact of the matter is he would just didn't produce. He didn't produce. And a part of that is new offensive coordinator and new coach every year he's been there. New quarterback every year he's been there. No support from a receiving core except maybe last year, which they still underperformed if you consider it being Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry. He broke his wrist last year, ended up only playing a couple games, only ended up with uh, 10 targets, five catches or something like that, a touchdown. So – over the course of his three-year career, and you're looking at a guy with not even a total of – not even 10 touchdowns over three years. And you, they go – they have to get production from their tight end position for Baker Mayfield in Cleveland, and he's not doing it. Maybe it's the system. Maybe he doesn't want to be there. I don't know what it is. Send him somewhere else. He can have a productive career. He can be a very good tight end. He's got all the speed, the talent, the hands. The guy's a monster coming out of, the, out of college. And I was disappointed to see him go to Cleveland and – Sure enough, that disappointment manifested itself. Yep. Mac, I mean, what do you want the guy to do? I mean, Matt hit it on the head. He did not, you know, but it's a mix of things on why his numbers weren't up. 2019, he only played in four games. He got hurt. Um, but there's still talent there. I mean, yeah, I mean you know. When, it, when a coach takes over, the first thing he does is he takes the film of all the players and he looks at what happened over the years and whether they think that he's uh, – He's a keeper or not. So, I mean, look, uh, with with his tape that they reviewed, they don't find him a, a significant part of the offense next year. That's why they signed that guy that they that that they already looked at. So, uh, yeah, they're pretty much I, they're pretty much telling him that that his services are no longer needed. So, I mean, whether he wants out or not, he's probably going to get his wish anyway, unless he wants to sit on the bench. So. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll see what happens with him. I mean. I've got room for you on the Giants, buddy. Come on down. So the uh, I'll take three types. So the <laughs> always room. There's always room until until my man Ingram shows me he could be healthy for a full season. I've uh-huh. always got room. If he plays the full season this year, then Ingram's my guy. So yesterday we went out on the Big Guy Sports Facebook page and a couple other places, and we started asking people, what should the Redskins change their name to? Because the Redskins are going to change their name. And so are the Indians and possibly the Chiefs and maybe me and maybe Mac and everybody's just going to change their name until it's something that everybody's happy with. We could just all be called John Doe and then we won't matter anymore. So the Redskins, I asked people what their name is going to be. And I asked you guys to give this a little thought and that Mac doesn't just tell me the red, the Washington Coca-Cola's or something like yesterday. So let me give you some things that fans came up with here. Okay. So Tyrome, you know Tyrome, he's not here today, but he said either the Washington Bisons or the Washington Wood Trash. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with Wood Trash or the Bison. 
Uh, Lucas says the red tails, the pigskins, the generals, or the natives. I think the natives would need to be changed again. That might be. Yeah, that sounds a little off. <laughs> Frank, Frank trying to be funny, and I want to say that this is Frank and not me. He said, call them the Washington Catholic priests. Oh, oh no. Another name I'm not going to repeat. <laughs> Inappropriate. Uh, Chris says the Washington Warriors. Ben says the Washington PC culture sucks. <laughs> oh, come on, Ben. He said uh, someone else said the Washington Federals and even supplied a logo. I like that. I saw that one. That was really cool. I he like that one. Trying to get paid, um, you know, he put that logo. Uh, Damien said the Washington Warriors. Timmy said the Washington, D.C. Swamp Fillers. Oh, there you go. It was swamp fillers. That could be a nice logo. Um, Washington Senators and George says the Washington Warriors are politics and someone else said the Washington Wolves. Now, I gave you a night to think about it. Mac, the Washington what? Listen, listen. I'm in mourning right now about this. I mean, I don't, I don't even want to talk about this subject. It's so crazy. I you know, listen, we, it, it has finally happened. You have Big companies telling you what you can name your team now. Isn't that just beautiful, right? I mean, you know, pretty soon you're going to have the animal activist groups all up about having names of animals on their helmets and teams, and you're putting them in a competition and a violent thing. So we're going to have to wipe out all those names. It's right? going to be like the dolphins need to go. <laughs> but the dolphins should be set free. They should be held in captivity. So, help. you know. Yeah, so 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 all the teams that have animal names next are going to be wiped out. So we're going to have a bunch of adjectives, and we're going to have a bunch of adverbs for names. You know, and guess what? They're going to come from the Cowboys. America's team, what are Cowboys? Well, they drive herds. They lead them to slaughter, right? They leave all these animals to slaughter, <laughs> and they shoot Indians. So, I mean, Cowboys, you're going to have to change your names, too. I'm in mourning. This is a great franchise with a great history, and and – and they just taken this, and, and I wish Snyder for once in his life would have a backbone and say, guess what? Nine out of ten, nine, nine out of ten a Native Americans back in 2016 said they supported supported the team's name in a Washington poll because they kind of they kind of think it gives them some recognition. You know what I mean? But you know something? I just want to name the call, name the team, the Washington. Whatever you want to call it, that's that's my opinion. whatever. I like that the Washington yeah. whatever, and you just put a question mark on the helmet. Yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's a good one. Uh, before I let Mac give us his name, uh, let's see. Justin says the Washington Tribe. Michael says the Washington Americans. I, none of those will ever fly because then people will be like, "Well, what makes Washington more American than everybody else?" Yeah, yeah. You got yeah. Matt. You got a good name for me. Now you had some time to think about. It? No, I didn't. Actually, I've been looking at everybody else's ideas, but I'm just kind of stuck on one, the Red Tails one. I love that one with the basically the throwback to the Bombers, you know, and that would be a great transition for them to make. It'd be a great name. They don't have to change the colors. They won't have any issues, nothing like that. Listen, we cannot tell a group of people that something is not offensive, right? If they are that group of people and they feel like it's offensive, Okay, so if 100 Native Americans come out and say, hey, this is not offensive, okay, fine. But if you have 500 that come out and say, hey, this is offensive, then guess what? We need to make the accommodation, I suppose. Yeah, it's because right? we become, like the other guy said, a PC bunch of white. Yeah, it's a PC culture, and that's just the nature of the game. Now people are becoming more sensitive to the things that people find to be offensive. And so Redskins is like – I, I don't I never grew up thinking about it as some sort of derogatory term or any sort of racial thing. Like I'm like it's a football team, it's the Washington Redskins. I hate them, I'm a Giants fan. You know? That's the only thing. I'm not thinking about, oh man, that might be offensive to the Native American people, or I don't even know if we're allowed to call them Native American people anymore. Okay, so do they, yeah, I'm not, uh, Native Americans have their own national anthem? I, that I don't know. I mean, we could play three every game. They probably don't need an anthem to state claim to this land, but that's another talk for another podcast. Did they, get, did they ever get rid of the Florida State Seminole guy that rides in in the Indian? Uh, last year was his last year. Last year was his last season. So he's unemployed? Last year was his last season. Man, was just some um, PA from the college that didn't do nothing. They gave him a couple cases of beer to run that thing, I'm sure. I have a great idea. 
on what they should do with the names of all sports teams, all of them. Hear me out on this. Now, in reality, the, the, the name of the team starts in the beginning. Washington is Washington. We're a Giants fan, New York, right? We can put the Jets somewhere else and we'll call them New Jersey, whatever you want to do, so that there's a difference. But you get my point. Kansas City's Kansas City. <clears throat> Owners in sports are all about money, are they not? Mm-hmm. They're all about money. Sponsorships, and that's why the Redskins are in this mess because of Nike and FedEx. And Nike's going to be out of business anyway in 10 years because if you've looked at the numbers well before this, people don't buy their products anymore. Ever since, you say what you want, it was not a political show, but ever since they started, they lost a lot of money over the old Kaepernick issue, whatever. So Nike's falling apart anyway, so I don't care about Nike. Anyway, why not just have the it's it's the team is Washington. Who cares what the second name is? Why don't we just start branding them? Like if Jack Daniels wants to pay Washington lots of money, they'd be the Washington Jack Daniels. And the, <laughs> and the Giants one year to be uh, the New York Krispy Kremes because Krispy Kreme pays. We'll just have we'll just have sponsors and that's it. Since they carry all the weight anyway. You know, and you just put on the helmet so you don't have to change it all the time. The helmet would just say Washington or it would just say, you know, you're obviously not going to put a bottle of Jack Daniels on there because you don't want, you know, then you'll have parents complaining that their five-year-olds are watching bottles of Jack Daniels run down the field. Mm-hmm. Oh, this just solve all the problems. We'll just be sponsored. Bottles of Jack Daniels running down the field. Yeah, I mean, oh, just, man. Sponsors. Like, you'll be the Baltimore FedEx Listen, just they just need to stay away from names that are describing people by the color of their skin. <laughs> it probably seems like a good and novel you idea. The Washington Redskins name started the year. I'm asking. I, I mean, probably I, like or nineteen oh something. No, oh, no, they weren't in the league then. It had to be around nineteen. It had to be after nineteen twenty, um, probably in the late twenties, early thirties, I would guess, because football started in nineteen twenty. I wish I could find that answer out because I'd love to know. Let's see. The Washington Redskins. Boy, if you you know what this world would be like if we didn't have Wikipedia. So, Uh, 1932. Yeah, so Wikipedia is all I got. So, Washington Rockets is pretty good, too. So, the Redskins are going to change their name. That's just where I went finally. So I just wanted to get some ideas. I thought the fans had some really good ones. I thought, you know, some of the fans had some funny ones. So you could kind of tell who who wanted to change the name and who thought it was just ridiculous. Uh, that's a great name, Michael. Michael said, let's call him the Washington Big Guy Sports. I'm in. Put that on the screen. But I want some money for that. How much would that cost us? <laughs> How much would that cost us? Oh, I, want yeah. I want Hey, listen, that's free advertising. No, that they ain't gonna get. They ain't doing pay that. Them. <laughs> yeah, they're pay them. Not. We're just putting our logo on the side. There you go. Helmet. That's the advertisement. Yeah. You know what happens when the cheerleaders come out and they spell out on the field www.thebigguyssports.com and cheerleaders. So the Reds so, have to hire like 150 yeah, cheerleaders. Yeah. So but you realize that 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 uh, the thing on the side of the helmet of the Redskins wasn't always that. That wasn't always a, a Native American head. That used to just be like a feather or something like that, an a, a Indian feather. So, I mean, maybe that draw more attention to it. Guys, I think it's time for everybody to grow up and stop being so sensitive. That's all I, I think. I agree. He doesn't get pissed off one day that their relative died in a plane crash, or they might have to change the name of the New York Jets to the New York Helicopters. Hey, the, gi- no, hey, the Giants. can't do that either. <laughs> hey, hey, the Giants might, might hurt the feelings of some taller people, and you know we, can, we can't call it midget football anymore because you know it's, it's, you know what I'm saying. This, uh, this is how ridiculous it's gotten. The New York peppermint patties. Yeah, the, the, the Tennessee Twinkies, right? The Tennessee Twinkies. <laughs> and then, like, if a big major drug group gets involved, you could be like the New York Meth Heads. Oh. Why not? Yeah, you know, the New York money. methods. That sounds like a horrible idea, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> hey, money's money. You pay for advertisement, right? Yeah, if you've yeah. got the money, you've got the money. I mean, Pablo Escobar had enough money. He could have. He could have branded a football team. Yeah, I could. I could see the. I can, I can see the New York cartels. <laughs> yeah, I can see the fans. Yeah, like those, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. So anyway, so as the Washington Redskins try to think of a name and. 
I would recommend that they, you know, look at all the fans. They got some good ones. Um, let's move on to the next news. I'm, I'm saving for the last half hour a special subject that I know is going to get Mac fired up because he's talking about it on Facebook. So, fired up. so let's move on to uh, I Tua. I like to teach me how to pronounce his first name. Tua, no, his last name, Tua Tagaviola. Tagaviola. Tua Tonga Tagaviola. 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 Tua. Don't do it like anyone else. Anyway. Call him Triple T. That's a Triple T. That's a good one, man. You should, you should uh, trademark that before he uh, tries to steal it. So, anyway, as you all know, Miami drafted Tua in the first round of this year's draft. Mm-hmm. If you follow the Dolphins, while they're still called the Dolphins, you would know that they have not really had a quarterback to really, you know, lock in at that franchise position since Dan Marino. That's a long time coming since Dan Marino. They think they finally found their guy. And there are a lot of people saying this could be the chance they have to have someone there long term. And you want to feel that way anyway. You can't blame them for feeling that way because of the fact that, you know, when's the last time they really had this much buzz about a quarterback? Ryan Tannehill? He was the last guy, right? He was the last first rounder. Right, but Tannehill, obviously, you know, they didn't have a good system for him. You know what I mean? It didn't work out. So, you know, what do you think about – I want to throw – listen to the names that have run through Miami, okay, just to give you an idea. They've had Matt Moore, Ryan Tannehill, Chad Pennington, Jay Fiedler, Joey Harrington, Jay Cutler, Josh Rosen. The list is good. And Ryan Fitzpatrick. So the list goes on and on and on and on. So can Matt, can Tua be that guy to finally bring some long-term stability? He doesn't need to be Dan Marino, but can he bring stability to where four years from now we're not looking at Miami drafting another quarterback? <sighs> I'm so torn on this, man, because I have seen Alabama quarterbacks look like world beaters time and time and time again. All right. John Parker Wilson, A.J. McCarron, Tua Tunga Tagovailoa. You've seen these guys win national titles back to back, put up gaudy numbers, wide receivers in the first round, running backs in the first round, entire offensive lines and entire defenses drafted in the first round. Okay. I'm talking about backup wide receivers getting drafted in the top three, top four rounds for the Alabama Crimson Tide. When you look at a guy like two, a six foot tall, a little undersized, I know that's not a valid excuse anymore because you got guys coming, they can it doesn't matter their height and stuff like that as much. If they build the team around him, get him some wide receivers, get him a legitimate running back. Kenyon Drake is not the guy. None of those guys are legitimate threats at running back. I think they got that kid on Kalen Balaj. He's really good. They need to get him starting full time. And if you support Tua the right way, he can be a great game manager for you, I believe. But I don't think he's going to be the one to come in and take a couple middle round, middle level guys that would be some would consider average NFL players. He's not going to take them to the next level. You understand? But I think that he's going to be good enough to win the Dolphins some games with the right cast around him. Well, before I turn it to Mac, I got to put you on the spot for a concrete answer here. Five years from now, two is still the quarterback or they're drafting someone new? With Brian Flores, if Brian Flores sticks around and has some success, two will still be the quarterback. All right, Mac, how do you feel about Tua and his future? I mean, Matt makes some really good point. There's a lot of guys who go to Alabama, play with basically an NFL roster, put up a lot of big numbers. The one that always comes to mind for me is A.J. McCarron and turn out to be nothing more than backups in the NFL. Well, I, I disagree with Matt to, to a point because the systems Alabama had in before Tua was more a running style, uh, play action pass, a defense oriented team, and they just crushed you. They smothered you. When Tua got there, they opened up the game. They, they split out people. They started really throwing the ball. Um, the only concern I have is Tua's is, of course, his injuries. I mean, the guy's got great touch. He can throw a beautiful pass. Uh, his read is okay for a, for a college quarterback. He can read pretty good. Uh, 
maybe his timing on his passes have to be a little bit better. He'll have to learn that because he does run. And a lot of times when quarterbacks run is because they can't, they can't see an open receiver that isn't open. You know, they, they got to move to make that receiver more open so they can make that throw. That's why he got hurt. He didn't get hurt because he was running with the football. He was trying to lengthen out the play to get somebody more open. So he's going to have to learn that. A lot of quarterbacks have to learn how to fit those balls in the tight windows or throw the receiver open. That's something all young quarterbacks have got to learn. I mean, the two rookies I can think of right now, the two youngest quarterbacks, is, is Arnold, uh, Darnold and Jones. They have they can throw the receivers open already. They can hit him in tight spots without running with the ball. So that's something Tua is, Tua is, Tua is going to have to learn that. But if he stays healthy, I think he's going to be a good, very solid, maybe a great quarterback if they if they do – uh, uh, get him going on his pass timing and in quick reads. All right, so that gets all the same question I asked. I asked him five years. Then you feel that two is still there? If not hurt, yeah, definitely. All right, so everybody's high on Tua. That's a good thing. All right, so let's move on to the next subject of the day. I want to talk about Cam Newton. We talked about this a little bit during the week. Cam Newton went to the Patriots. There was a lot of debate on whether – you know, whether he, you know, was he going to start right away? Would Stidham still get a spot? I know Matt and I went back and forth on some of the terminology that the Patriots chose to use after signing him. So Cam came out about the money because there was a big thing on social media and in the media itself about Cam Newton signing for such a little bit amount of money. Because typically, if none of his incentives are made, he's willing $1.1 million dollars for a guy who was the MVP a few years back. So here's what Cam had to say, that it's not a lot of things money cannot buy, but amongst them, top of those lists, you wouldn't find respect. This is not about money for me. It's about respect. He said it's not about the money. It's about respect. Now, going over, so here's what it. Here's what the deal is, okay? He got... One year deal that reportedly included five hundred and fifty thousand in guaranteed money. His base salary is one point zero five million, which is the league minimum. He can earn an extra six point five million by hitting all of the incentives in his contract. Newton's coming off a back to back injury plagued seasons. Now <clears throat> I didn't expect Cam Newton, and this time I'll start with Mac. I didn't expect Cam Newton to come and say something stupid because right off the bat, the Patriots don't play that game. Well, not only that, I mean, he signed a deal. He didn't have to sign the deal. That that was his decision. Right, but if he would have come and made a a a statement that sounded like he was unhappy with it, the Patriots have no problem just cutting bait with somebody. Well, you know, know, Jim, listen, again, as we talked about before on, on Cam Newton, he wanted to be a starting quarterback for a team. He didn't want to be backup. He didn't want to, and teams with young quarterbacks didn't want him there having them look over the shoulder at Cam Newton right behind him, ready to jump in as soon as they mess up. So the Patriots were really the only team that said, okay, you can come in here and you can compete for this starting job, and it could be your team. And that's why Newton went to the Patriots. If he has a great year, we'll see what happens. He'll make his money. He'll he'll do whatever. If he's still injury-plagued and he can't throw the ball like he used to, then we'll see you that too. He will probably won't get the starting job, but at least it gives him a shot to do what he wants to do to compete for a starting quarterback. And you know, being a Super Bowl uh, Super Bowl player, an MVP, one of the best uh, running quarterbacks in the league for a few years. I mean, he deserves respect. But he's still got to play now, and he's still got to he's still got to show that he's not injured and that he can make the throws. Well, that was the Matt. That was the problem that bothered me the most about it is that I, you know. You know, people like Richard Sherman and other people come out and say disgusting and he got paid a little less. And it's like, well, with all due respect, Cam Newton hasn't done that well the last two years. So you're asking the league to pay him on what he did three or four years ago. Who who does that? I mean, you don't pay someone based on what they did three years ago. You pay you're as good as your last season. That's just the way it is. Fact of the matter is there are fifty two quarterback contracts in the NFL worth more than what Cam Newton will be getting paid this coming year. Mm-hmm. And if you tell me that there's anything okay with that, just because he had a down year last year, he played two games, right? No, he had two two injury back to back years where he he was hurt, but games. he still played fifteen games mm-hmm. the year before. He still played fifteen games hurt. Mm-hmm. All right, we saw him short arming the ball. We saw him 
not torquing his hips. We saw him having to adjust his throwing motion because of the shoulder injury. He had no range of motion for his throws. Yet they kept throwing him out there. They kept running option plays. They kept running RPOs. They didn't protect him. They didn't protect him. He went down for them, and then they sacrificed. They said they, they threw him out. All right. I've never been a big fan of Cam Newton, but I've always been a fan of his game because I believe that he's he's a one of those players like he's he's a giant man. He's huge. He's built like a brick outhouse. All right. The dude can run. He can throw. He can make every throw, every throw, touch, velocity, everything. When the game is on the line, we've seen him come back, bring his team back, score at the end. Let me tell you, he's going to provide a culture shock in New England is what it's going to be. It's going to be a culture shock, and I just have a feeling, man, that he's going to come in there and he's going to wake that team back up, and they're going to do some big things. They're going to make some noise. Him coming into the AFC East really just put the ball back in the Patriots' court, in my opinion. He's going to have a great year. Well, I'm going to come on a different angle from this and stay away from the contract and give one of those predictions that I love to give, that Cam Newton will not finish the season as the Patriots' starting quarterback. So, in my opinion, write it down, hate on me, go on Facebook, Stidham's better. Like, mm. I think Cam Newton's career is finished. So Cam wow. Newton, go to New England. That's just my opinion. This is my opinion. Cam Newton, I feel like he's injury thrown. I feel like there's a lot of injury prone. I feel like there's a lot of damage to the shoulder. And that's my biggest concern. I don't want to take anything away because I'm not talking about I'm not hating on Cam Newton, the person I'm talking about what his injuries have made him into. I'm not you give me Cam Newton of four years ago. I'll take him over. Bro, we've seen guys come back from way worse shoulder injuries. And that I understand. But we for every guy we've seen come back off of injuries. We've also seen guys who never get it back. So we've seen it both ways. I just feel like I re- hope he does well. Good for the man. Maybe he goes out as a great season, gets a killer contract next year, which he will if he plays well. But I just worry about that shoulder. I saw a lot of concerning things. Everyone says he's healthy. Al says he's healthy. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If Cam Newton is so healthy and everybody feels so great about Cam Newton, forget what three of us say. We're just talking sports. If everybody loves Cam Newton and he's so healthy, why did no team want him? Because the only Patriots, a handful needed him. There was only a couple that needed the him. Patriots wouldn't have signed him either if it wasn't for him taking such a low ball deal. So you're going to tell me that Cam Newton, you're going to tell me that when we get later in the season, closer to the season, and we come and we do our 32 quarterback breakdown list, you're going to tell me Cam Newton's going to be in your bottom three? Bottom it's three? Not. No, right? You're not going to – when we rank quarterbacks, is Cam Newton going to be somewhere from 30 to 32 for you? No, right? No. be higher. So that tells you that he's better than a lot of other those guys. But, yet nobody wanted him. It's not that nobody wanted him. It's the fact of nobody had the right place. Cam Newton is is a quarterback. You have to put him in the right place, in the right system, with the right people. Where are you going to – where was Cam Newton going to go? Name a team outside of – Jacksonville. Outside of Jacksonville or hey, outside, of, Carolina. outside of Jacksonville. No, not even Carolina. Carol, he was just in Carolina. I know, but, I, but, but I'm just saying. You're just saying where could he have played? He could have played at Carolina still. They didn't have to draft Carolina him. has their right. guy, man. Carolina has they, their they, guy. They, with they, they didn't have to cut him. They didn't have to get him. They didn't have to get him. Listen, listen, Matt, I agree with a lot you're saying there right now, and you too, Jim. But let me tell you something. Cam Newton wanted to be a starting quarterback. That's what it was. His injuries, teams were scared of him. No, no, no team with a young quarterback upon a Cam Newton there. And I don't blame him if you're going to try to develop a quarterback. But there are teams out there that have okay quarterbacks that Cam Newton could have gone and played with. Jacksonville's one. He could have stayed with Carolina. I mean, you know, listen, there, there are, are a few teams out there with average quarterbacks. All right, that's it. They get, Miami could have brought him in, and two would come behind hey, him. Hey, wanna, Newton's not better than Fitzpatrick. There's, there's plenty of there are teams out there that could have, could have went and got him, but they didn't. And, and that has to be because of the shoulder, and that has to be because he wanted and to that's be a all I'm, I'm concerned about the shoulder, and I think that his injuries will crop up. It's a bad one to the throwing shoulder, and that he won't finish the season. It has nothing to be with do with him as the person. It's just him as the quarterback. And 
you bring up an interesting point. There are other teams he could have gone to, but I bring up an interesting point to Richard Sherman because Richard Sherman just commenting because he loves to run his mouth when he can. He's always been that kind of guy. I bring an interesting point to Richard Sherman. Is it possible? Did you ever think about the possibility that maybe Cam Newton was offered more money to go somewhere else as a backup and said no because he wants to start? Could have. That's totally possible. Could have, but the fact that living – Cam Newton, how quickly we forget. Cam Newton was terrorizing the NFL a few years ago. I didn't they had no solution for him. Okay? When he won that MVP, think about it. You guys can think back. and Oh, what, what, what? Cam Newton was considered the best quarterback in the NFL his MVP year. And then guess what? He took a beating. He's not going to take that kind of beating in New England. He's not. My concern in New England is, obviously, he has no one to throw the ball to. That's a big deal. That it's matters. Oh, so what's his face? What's the scruffy guy that always Brady always Edelman? Takes? Yeah, he's still got scruffy. Edelman. Yeah, Edelman's there. You know, he's getting old, man. Edelman's he getting old. And he just lets it out. Yeah, man. Edelman's getting old. I actually had to trim this thing up the other day, man. It was getting out of control. It was rubbing up against the mic and everything. But I thought he was gonna go like um Justin said. I had thought the Chargers would have been a great fit as opposed to Tyrod Taylor. And I thought that um Man, my, I'm drawing just a blank. The Patriots, I, from the get-go, I thought he was going to go to the Patriots. We had talked about this. I told you guys the Patriots are going to be the move. Um, Man, look, they got to give him a chance. You can't let a talent like that, a guy with that kind of ability, not get another chance just because he's been hurt for a couple of years. Well, he's got – Go ahead, Jim. No, I was going to say he's got one, and I was going to say – I want to make sure that all the people, because I see some people showing some love for Cam. I got Matt showing some love. I hope you all draft him if you all sign up for the Big Guy Sports Fantasy Football League that we're starting soon. Because I want to see. I don't want to see Cam Newton go undrafted till the ninth round when you all are in here talking about how great he is. And if I see somebody draft Stidham before Newton, I'm putting it all over Facebook. And, and, re, and remember, remember the saying, remember the Alamo, right? That was a, that was a, a cry to, 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 to put people, you know, to feel good about going to war and stuff with, with, uh, with Mexico. Well, remember Drew Brees, all right? Remember Drew Brees with that bad shoulder nobody wanted at New Orleans, New Orleans signed him. And he became one of the greatest quarterbacks, uh, stats wise in the, in the history of the NFL. So there is always that chance that Newton is healthy. And if he is, the Patriots are definitely, in my opinion, they're the favorite to win that division. Absolutely. Oof, how quickly y'all throw the Bills to the side. You mm -hmm. don't, he doesn't like Josh Allen anyway, Matt, so I don't care. Don't I, I like Josh Allen. Mac is the Mac, one that said he can't hear water falling out of a boat. It wasn't me. I didn't say that. That was Mac. Mac don't like Josh Allen. So all the way, the Bills just went, Phew. I just got I, mean, I got I got stuff from Bills fans yesterday, courtesy of Justin. He told me that the Bills fans say I don't talk enough about the Bills, even though we're in New York, so they don't. Well, we just that. did. We just did. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't talk. Well, they're jumping through tables. What are we going to tell them about? We can't tell. They're not even. They're busy in Buffalo right now. Leave them alone. Let them do their thing. They're basically Canada anyway. The Bills are going to be good. Keep it, keep it. No, no they will be good. They will be good. That's going to be a really competitive division, man. I Listen, now you look at that division now, Patriots, Jets, Bills, Miami Dolphins, that's going to be a really, really competitive division. There's a pick. Right. The Jets finish in last place. I hate to say it. Oh, very much so. Yeah, very much so. Miami, Especially if Cam Newton comes in there. You know how much money Miami spent this offseason on defense? A lot. I think Miami's going to be really good. I do, too. Sleeper. Sleeper squad. They are a sleeper squad. Speaking of the Jets, the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 Justin's team, Jamal Adams. Ah. Interesting article. This is not actually – Jamal Adams hasn't spoke, so we're not talking about Jamal Adams speaking. But I read an interesting article that brought up an interesting point. Is Jamal Adams – in all the complaining he's doing, in all the toxicness he's bringing to the locker room, will that affect the defense's play on the field if he's still there and unhappy? Now, I want to tell you something about Jamal Adams real fast. Among defensive backs since 2017, Jamal, when he came in the league, Jamal Adams ranks fifth in tackles with 272, first in sacks with 12, First in QB hits with 23, 
and first in tackles for loss with 28. Arguably, you could consider him the best DB in football. Mm-hmm. On those stats since 2017, which is when he came in. So how much of an effect, if this continues into the season with him being unhappy, how much of an effect does that have? We'll start with Matt on the Jets play on the field, or when you get on the field, do you just forget about it all? Oh, is he going to be making business decisions, or is he going to be playing football? All right. Good question. Jamal Adams is not just a one-dimensional safety. Like he's not. Uh, he's not just a guy that's playing the middle court, middle third of the field, or covering tight ends. He's doing everything, like you said. He's leading the league in tackles. He's one of the one of only two players with ten sacks and more than twenty passes defended, or something like that, in his first couple of years. He's a he's a game changer. He's a game breaker. And if he's not happy, that means he's probably not playing up to par. That means the rest of the defense is not going to play up to par. He compensates for a lot of missing pieces, a lot of holes in the Jets' defense. And uh, <clears throat> honestly, man, I feel like at the end of the day, all this is actually kind of frivolous because the Jets are going to end up re-signing him. They're not going to let this guy walk. There's no way they can. Does it bring a? Does it bring a? Uh, does it bring a mm. negative attitude to the field? Or does yeah, it- for sure, for sure. Yeah. They know. They know what's going on. Comes through the lines jumps over that line and puts on that helmet and the ref blows the whistle that he forgets about all that and the team just plays ball? Very well could be, but I think what's going to happen is it will reflect on the field because it reflects in your relationship with your teammates and stuff like that. They know what's going on. They're not blind or dumb to it, and it will affect him. It will affect the play. It will affect the team, and if he's not playing full tilt, then the Jets' defense is not playing full tilt. All right, so they need to get it together. they got to cut him a check. Pay him what he's worth, which is every penny he's asking for. I keep saying it. Get your bag, Jamal Adams. Only one other player in the NFL since 2000 had 10-plus sacks in his first three seasons and 25 or more passes defended over his first three seasons. And you know who that is? J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt. The best. Sorry. Ever. That's all right. One of the best ever. So that's good company. Um, Mac, you think that carries over to the field? Like I asked Matt, or do you feel like, you know, you strap it in? Because the whole the whole point of this discussion is, and Matt hit on it too, is that I'm just curious as to if this goes on into the season and he's complaining in the media, does it carry over and affect the rest of the defense? Because they need him. I mean, he's, you know, I just read, I don't mean, I just read you the numbers. He's one of the best in the league. So they need him happy. How did the Jets yeah. – let me ask you a different question instead since Matt asked If everyone's sitting here saying they're not trading them, they're not trading them, and they might not. And let me give Matt a minute. Mac a minute. Oh, Mac. Mac had <laughs> not enough tequila for breakfast. <laughs> so, you know. Let me, let me ask you a question since you're still with us. This is good. Let me um, could switch gears for a minute because I see people saying they're not going to trade them. I get that. Okay, don't trade them. I wouldn't trade them either. But that's the, – not trading him does not equal happiness. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, trading him to a long term deal for top five defensive player dollars makes Jamal Adams happy. So let me ask you this How in the world, when I read you those stats, can the Jets not mm-hmm. sign Jamal Adams to a top notch deal? I mean, they don't have anyone else. So you know, what are you what are you talking about here, Mac? Well, I was I was reading a, a couple of articles on that, and they were talking about how they could trade Jamal Adams away for some good players right now and a couple first round draft choices. Listen, this is he's got to play, and he's still got to have a good year to get a good contract from another team, even if he wants to go anywhere. If he's gonna if he's not going to play this year, it's going to look bad for him. Other teams are not going to be uh, chomping at the bit to get him because it looks like that he's you know he's a he's a cancer in the locker room or whatever. So the ball is clearly in, in Adams' court, whether he gets paid, whether he gets a new contract, whether he goes to another team. But there are options that the Jets could do. This is a great player, as you said. I mean, you know, there are players out there. We just talked about the defensive lineman for Kansas City, right? I mean, how great would he be as as a defensive lineman for the Jets? So there are options out there that you can 
that you can explore and talk about to to not totally replace him at the safety position, but maybe build a Jets defense or their offense even a little bit more. This is entirely in Adams' court. Uh, if he affects the defense during the game, um, I mean, it's going to look bad for any team that wants him. Mm-hmm. So. I, I really believe that the Jets, I wouldn't pay him right now. i make him play this year out and see what he does. If he if he becomes a problem, that's going to be his problem in the future. But if he does give give his all, plays another great year, then I would, as a Jets, I would definitely sign him to a big second. See, I'm not sure I buy the whole they can get a two, two first-round picks for him and a good player because if that was the case, he'd be gone. I think they'd trade him if they got an offer of first-round picks plus a plus quality players. I think Once teams know he wants out, that goes the leverage right there. You know, your your value automatically decreases by half at least. Once uh, other teams realize, like, well, he wants to get out of there and they have to move him. So, But the thing is, they don't have to move him right now. You know, they don't have to do anything with him. And I don't think he's going to sit. Remember a couple of years ago when Janoris Jenkins was taking dives and stuff like that instead of making tackles when his contract was running out? Y'all remember that? I, yeah. I think – that you're gonna see a lot of that. These guys are that's just what they're hip to and savvy to these days. They're gonna they're gonna, gonna hey man, I'm not gonna make that hit. I'm not gonna square up with Derrick Henry and the whole head up and risk my getting destroyed, risk my career just for these guys, no way. And that's what happens. Um you can't replace Jamal Adams. No, no matter who you plug in there, you can't replace Jamal Adams. There's not two guys that can replace Jamal Adams, you know. Uh, I just don't see a way the Jets can get out of this looking good without signing him to the long-term deal. Well, we just- Al said, I'm, excuse me, I meant to address that. Al, our, our buddy Al says that he's a box safety, which I don't think could be any more inaccurate of a statement. Jamal Adams is not a box safety. Jamal Adams is a defender, period. He plays everything. A box safety is Landon Collins. Landon Collins is a box safety. You know, he can't cover for nothing. Well, listen, you know? a transact has happened during the NFL all the time. We just talked about Golden with the Giants, right? A good outside linebacker. The Jets don't have an outside line. Well, they got a couple good outside linebackers, but they don't have a pressure guy. you got the guy from the Chiefs. You can have a lot of people that are going to come available after they start cutting their teams down. So, I mean, you can build your team. Uh, look what happened with the Cowboys and the Vikings. You can, you can with Herschel Walker, you can build a whole team sometimes on a great player. It all depends on how smart the GM is. It all depends on what you want to go forward with. So I'm not saying there's a better safety or even defensive back out there than Jamal Adams. I'm saying that there's a lot of holes in the Jets' defense and offense that could be filled if the, at the end of this year if Jamal Adams gives them a hard time. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I, for one, still believe that the Jets will eventually make him the contract offer that he wants and that, you know, money talks. And he'll forget about all the bad things he said about the Jets and he'll sign on the dotted line. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Cat. Not about anything else. <clears throat> no matter what they try to tell you. So on that note, moving on, and let me see what we have here. So Jim says, you know, they're not trading him and we need to wait and be patient. Justin says he doesn't think they're going to trade him either. And Al says we disagree then. And it's good to agree to disagree. It's always uh, – that's what debate is all about. So – uh, did you read this article about the NFL and fining players for not following protocols? I actually like this. So the NFL has passed the thing where now they're going to find players if they don't follow protocols, such as eating out at restaurants would get them fined. Using riding share services such as Uber would get them fined. Um, any action that would deem be deemed reckless with the regard of a risk of getting or spreading COVID-19 will con- get a player fined. So that's very interesting. What do you think about that, Mac? If you uh, if you don't do things right, you go and pay the bill. Yeah, I guess that's where, where you can hit them, right? Is it in their pocket? In their pocket? Oh, that's right. you, know, you know something, but you there's, there's part of me that doesn't like this. I mean, they're grown men. They have lives of their own, and you're, like, treating them like little kids. I mean, they benefit punishes them for wearing certain shoes, certain socks. You can't put, you know – some eye, you know, the, the glare stuff on and put messages in there. I mean, this this kind of seems like, you know, daddy telling you if you if you stay out late, you know, you're going to be grounded for two weeks. I, it, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. I mean, I, we're all we're all uh, we're all men here. 
Um, you know, I understand with the virus, they got to take steps and stuff like that. But I mean, that kind of gives them a lot of leverage on, you know, if you miss your ride, you got to call Uber to get to the field. What are you going to do? I mean, come on. I mean, it, it, yeah. Don't miss your ride. Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, listen, I, I understand it. I kind of, kind of just kind of rubs me the wrong. Right. But let me ask you a question. It's, I mean, just look at like any normal job. Like if you have a job somewhere and you have to either wear a uniform or, you can't go do something like this or, or flex bad on the company or do something like that. You could be suspended from work. You could be let go. Everybody's got to be accountable. I mean, I think a lot of times that people forget athletes are employees. Mm-hmm. Not, they don't own the company. They work for the company. Without the company, they have no job. I agree. If the company tells you that these are the these are the ways that we need to protect our company, just like any company, if you work to Target and Target said to you, you know, if you want to work here, you got to come in and get a, a temperature check every time you come in. I don't know why people keep thinking athletes have more power than they do. They're well, the fact of the matter is, guys, remember the NFL athletes are independent contractors. There you They're go. not employees. They don't, they, the, the NFL does not employ them. Employees who said they're independent said, contractors. They are, by definition, independent contractors. Do they get NFL, NFL employees are independent contractors who contract with the NFL, a private company. And get paid right? to do work. So now the company has the right to implement whatever protocols it wants and adjustably find those contractors accordingly. But a company cannot dictate or mandate what an independent contractor necessarily does in his own time. Person. Or even, you see, there's, it's very, very particular. The, the, actually, the company I work for, that's how we operate is with independent contractors. And the, the verbiage is very difficult. Like, you can't use the term employee. You can't tell someone they have to do something. You can't force them to do anything. You have to make suggestions. You can implement fines and fees and penalties for not doing these things, Right. But the fact of the matter is they're independent contractors and they have to follow what this company's guidelines are if they want to continue to work and be a part of this company. Okay. But the fact of the matter is they're not employees. It's not like working at Target or Walmart or something like that. All right. They have rights and they're going to use them through the union. Even you just stated, even regardless of whether they're employee, they're an independent contractor, there's rules to follow. Yeah, so, but the, their rights now they can push back on the league if they they can simply go say okay standard you have to have twenty one percent parts per whatever oxygen standard to work OSHA requires you to have at least nineteen point three percent oxygen parts per molecule I don't know how they measure oxygen percentage okay if you put a mask over our thing we've only got seventeen percent we can't work under these conditions I'm not wearing a mask and guess what it's well within their right to do that. And it's well the employer's right to say, okay, you're not coming in this building. Have a nice day. That's just the way it is. And so it is going to, that's what's going to happen. They're just going to keep bumping heads and we're going to be at the standstill as to what the safety protocols are going to be. The players bump heads with the NFL, little reality check for these NFL players. The NFL always wins and always has and always will. And always will. Well, you know, power they've given. And before you say, before I let you go, Mac, I know you want to go on this. Understand that it's the players union's fault. They gave the NFL commissioner the power to suspend and fine who he wants yep. with the agreement that they wouldn't fight it, Mac. Well, well, Matt is right to a point. They are, they are, they are not employees of the NFL, but they are employees of the team. So, I mean, you you go out there when you go and you'd hit free agency, you're selling yourself like a private contractor would, definitely. But they still work for the New York Giants. They represent the Giants, who in turn represents the NFL, which is a whole different a whole different thing. There's antitrust laws. I mean, there's so much stuff you could talk about on that end. The only thing I was saying was that in your personal life, if it is your in your contract, which I don't think it's in their contract right now with the COVID. I, I I'm not sure. I didn't see nothing like that. They may say you can't ride a motorcycle. I mean, if you're going to play for our football team, the team will say, "Well, guess what? You can't ride for a motorcycle because you could get hurt." But it's right. But they as far as people's contracts during yes, 
Big Ben is one he just said. But with this virus, I don't know how much power they can tell them, hey, if you're by a pool at your house and you have people over, you got to wear a mask or I'm going to find you. I think that would be grieved, and I think the player would win that. Because you're not now you're telling the guy what he can do in his personal life. I don't think they can do that. I don't know. They're trying to protect the fact of him going somewhere, getting infected, and coming and infecting all the players. They're not doing it. <laughs> because they want to be difficult towards the player. I mean, if that was the case, they would have told them they couldn't eat at restaurants six years ago. Understand. Trying to keep the league going. But we'll, see, <clears throat> we'll see how it all works out. So we have two more topics I want to get to down in our last half hour. One that I know Max very passionate about, and then I want to get to Kevin had brought up something in the first 10 minutes of the show that I want to get some time on too. So first, I'm going to give Mac his platform to go nuts. Um, and we love him when he gets nuts. Back, the NFLPA, this is the players' union, right? Voted that they will not be in favor of playing any preseason games, which means most likely you're not going to see any preseason games. Now, I know you and I have debated this because I yeah. I don't care, and you have said you do, and you right. like to throw Victor Cruz in my face every time, every time yeah. up, which is a fair argument. So here's the question. Now that you know they're not going to play preseason games, Mac, tell us how you feel. Well, I mean, because of the, the, the virus there and, and the season may be running late, I can understand to a point. But they've been talking about cutting preseason games for years, maybe not playing them. And, you know, the commenters push this because, you know, the media, big media doesn't want to cover preseason games. Uh, the, the, uh, the fans that have season tickets don't want to spend – you know, the package of the four preseason games. And the veteran players, of course, they don't want preseason games because they could lose their jobs to some some young guy who was never signed. <laughs> so, I mean, that all makes sense as far as that goes. But there's one thing you never heard, and I've said this before. I've never had a coach come out on his own and say, hey, listen, get rid of preseason. I have never heard one say that because it's a, one of the most important parts of evaluation of young players. And if you take this away, you're going to lose a lot of players that have become Hall of Famers because they haven't had to get the chance to get looked at once or two, three times. You're going to lose uh, guys that went to Super Bowl that were MVPs and that and that contributed unbelievable. I just want to give you a few names before I push on, guys. Victor Cruz, I say, yeah, because he was one of the greatest giant receivers ever. Unbelievable help in the Super Bowl year. You have Antonio Gates. He's caught a few passes in some games, I believe. Oh, man. You have <laughs> You have Wes Welker, who did pretty good. I mean, he caught some balls, too. You had Tony Romo, who played for Dallas for a couple of years. You had Josh, you had John Randall, who hit a couple quarterbacks now and then. You had a pretty good linebacker for Pittsburgh named Harrison, who, who made a play in the Super Bowl to turn the Super Bowl around. These guys are Hall of Famers MVPs, not to mention Kurt Warner and maybe Warren Moon, who I know he came over from another league, but he, was, he had to get looked at a few times. I'm just saying, guys, the players that are coming up right now, there are some players that are going to come in, they're going to affect the team, they're going to affect the team's future, and you're not going to see these guys because they're not going to get a look-see. They're in a play situation where a coach is calling a game scheme, a game strategy, and looking at these players, how they react and, 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 and play during that type of game. And it may be boring to a lot of people. It might be. But when you have a James Harrison years after that, you're not too bored anymore. When you have a Victor yeah. Cruz, Who's making those catches? All of a sudden, you're not bored anymore. Mm-hmm. And when you have Kurt Warner throwing Super Bowl touchdown passes, you're not bored anymore. So I I understand that it is maybe trivialized to some fans. Me, I watch all the preseason games. I love to see what players may come on and make an impact. And, yeah, we have a lot of misses, but, man, we hit some good ones. Yeah. Now, before I turn it over to Matt, I want to say, see, folks, this is what I was talking about. This is good. That's good TV right there. That's good stuff. I'm telling you. And I want to, Michael brings up, don't make me laugh. That's why there's scrimmages. And I don't disagree with Michael a lot, but I am here. Even though I don't care as much about the preseason as Max does, scrimmages and evaluating that way is not the same as a game. It never has been. It never will be. Uh, sorry, that just I don't agree with. Because And I'm not a fan of preseason. But mm-hmm. – because I don't like to see my guys get hurt and stuff like that. Um, so, Matt, can you really – what can you add to that? I mean, are you – I mean, because he – one thing Max said in his whole thing that also is he said, if they decide. Well, it's not if. They've decided. There will right. be no preseason games this year. But let's not get confused. Right. That's not them eliminating preseason for life. This, yeah. The COVID-19 thing, 
the NFL has talked about for many times that they might cut the amount of preseason games down, which you probably will see sometime in the future. But, you know, no preseason games this year. Uh, I guess you do you feel the same or you just does it not bother you or move you one way or another? How do you feel about that? Preseason, uh, as I stated before, is very important. I, I don't think the likelihood of you finding that one-off superstar all-star is so great that you say, okay, we get rid of preseason, we'll never see another out-of-nowhere guy pop up again out of camp or out of trials or something like that. You know, yes, Mac, man, I cannot disagree with anything you said about the guys you listed off and stuff like that. You're right. Those guys emerged out of the preseason to get the opportunities they got on the field. That's indisputable. I cannot argue that. But but you listed like five guys. Oh, I got more, buddy. I, I know you do. I know you do. I know you can probably name 10, 15, okay? But the fact of the matter is, out of the out of the thousands of players that have ever played in the NFL preseason, it's that tens of thousands of players have played in the NFL preseason, right? We've got comparably a handful of guys that have made it out of there to become like real, real true life superstars, Hall of Famers, right? So you can look at it from that angle like, okay, the percentage of guys we might lose, miss out on is just worth losing out on for the overall greater safety of the league, the players, and proceeding with the actual regular season. You know, because guess what? During the season, some of those same guys that were going to get chances in the preseason are going to get tryouts. They're going to get chances to come on the squad during practice team, practice squad. They're going to get to be part of the team, things like that. And so we'll see guys come out. We're just not going to see him play against other second, third, fourth stringers in the preseason. Um, it's going to hurt some guys. You bring so. up an interesting point right there that I, you know, even I forgot to think about too. In my, at times, is that one of the things that <clears throat> is very valuable for the preseason is that you know, forget all the guys you know the you listed were great, <clears throat> but think about all the guys who go who get signed as free agents. You know out of the draft, come to a team, let's say the Giants or the Jets or whoever, play a few preseason games. Maybe the Giants or Jets don't keep them because they don't have the room because maybe maybe they came in as a running back and the Giants were sold on four running backs already. But some other team sees their tape and has room for them because let's not forget, those other teams, the only tape they get outside of what the Kirsten did in college is preseason games. The Giants don't say, hey, Bill Belichick, you know what? Let me let's send you our practice tapes so you can learn about our team. They don't get that. That's not shared information, unless of course you're the Patriots where they, you know, stick guys in the stands to watch those things. So you gotta be careful with them because they're a little sneaky. But that's a good point that we don't think about sometimes is how many players have been cut from camps, but their preseason tapes got them a job somewhere else. Just think about this by a player's perspective, too. Say our jobs right now. Mm -hmm. They got people that we have replaced. These guys have been there for years. And if somebody didn't give us the chance, if somebody said, well, I'll let you come and work part-time. I'll let, we'll see what you can do. We would never have those jobs. We would never have. These guys have been working all their lives just for a shot. To get in the NFL, and you could you can go back and look at percentages, guys. Two percent of high school uh, uh, players make the college. Two percent from that college make the pros. There's a very very small small sample, and these guys that have had been in situations on teams in college where they haven't had a chance to start or they haven't had a chance to go up against major competition. This is the only competition they're going to get. And you're going to, and as I told you, Matt, I can go back to the fifties with this and, and throw night train lane at you. I can, I can go way back. Up. Oh, Matt, I mean, Mac, I mean, this is like, you said Mac train lane. You want to know what popped in my head? Wrestling. That sounds well, like wrestling. <laughs> it was a, a great, a great runner. Great running run back for the Cleveland Browns. And I have a list that goes back to the 50s of people that weren't drafted that became superstars. I just threw out the, the, the most notable right. right here. And there's one other, one other point before we push on. Not only do we have superstars that come in there, a lot of the giant, giant offensive linemen that started on a lot of Super Bowl teams were not drafted. Now, they're not big stars, but I'll tell you right now, they could be hot mollies. That's all they need to be. Uh, 
Uh, let me, I know I can't let you push on because I got to ask you another question. But this is the passion. This is why I love Mac, except for when he terrorizes me in text messages. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, let me ask you a question. But I need you. I'm afraid to ask you this question because I need you to put your bias aside for a minute. I need you to be realistic here, okay? And Natasha Leak, we're a big fan of hers, and she came on the show, and we appreciate her. Yeah. But the fact is there are no spring training games. There are no preseason games. Right. When we talked about Javon Leak, who you're a big supporter of his talent, you had mentioned that not only did you think he would make the team out of preseason, but that one day he would supplant Deion Lewis as the number two. I believe he's that guy. Right. Does this hurt his chances of making the team? Of course, of course. I mean, I mean, listen. He's not only got not only does he got Lewis to go through. You know, he's got a couple of years. Yeah. So I mean, he's going to have to just blow him away uh, in practice. And how do you how do you evaluate going on a seven on seven drill or running through one on one drills or two on one drills, whatever whatever at Oklahoma, whatever drills you want to run? How does that show how he? goes through the line, sees a linebacker, adjusts, makes a move, run him over, breaks to the outside against another team. And you won't see that because you can't – not to interrupt for a second, but because in practice, how often do the Giants or any team allow their defense to hit the running back? Exactly. So you don't know if he could break tackles, bounce off the guy, or what he's going to do. He's going to have to really shine. It's on special teams. On yeah. special teams, he's going to have to shine. Because, um, I mean, to cut you off, go ahead, Mac. But that's – you hit it right on the head there. They're not letting him hit him. No. I mean, I mean, they don't do that in practice anymore. They used to where you you lined up and went head-to-head and, and, and fights broke out. That's – that's, that's, head off. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a long time ago. So even with the rules today, you can't really hit like you used to. So how can you even tell if this man can handle being hit by a, 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 a NFL middle linebacker? You really don't know that now. So people like Javon Leak and even though, even believe it or not, guys, the lower uh, draft picks, I mean, they're low draft picks for a reason. They think mm-hmm. maybe they can be something. So we got a couple few linebackers that look like they could be something, but how are they going to show that? How are they how are they going to replace you know Frackle and and how are they going to how are they going to replace a Golden if he's there if we don't know what they can do during the game? And that's yeah. all. I'm yeah, and Matt, what about also? And we'll do a couple more minutes. As I do want to get to the last topic, Matt. What about all the giant? Like just speaking of the Giants, what about all the? How many free agent wide receivers did we sign that they had hopes for? Yeah. You know, what about all these guys now? Are not gonna, we're not going to get to see how they do in, against press coverage yeah. on TV and, in, you know what I mean, all that and other Mac stuff. and all those guys that they brought in. Listen, yeah, we're not going to see a lot of those guys that we normally would see. But you know what? Honestly, that might be a good thing for some Giants fans, and say, even the Giants, because you're not going to get fooled by anything you see in the preseason. So we know that much. Um, let me tell you, let's, just to revisit on Javon, I've been doing, like, watching a lot of Maryland tape since we had his mom on and like, let me tell you, the kid's going to make the team. He, they're they're going to keep him around at least for the first couple weeks of the season to see what he can do. You don't let a guy with that kind of flyer speed. Bro, speed is an understatement to define what that kid has. He is next level explosive when he gets that ball in his hand, special teams or otherwise. And I don't see a way the Giants let him walk off without even at least seeing what he can do on the field. And do you think there's a possibility if there's no preseason games now, because they can make changes that Matt, that the NFL, the NFL ups the amount of players you can keep into the season since you no, I actually think they're going to cut the amount of players you can keep going into the season. They're going to cut down the rosters of what they're going to do to keep the facilities limited. I think he's going to hit practice squad and be around so they can see him and use him and see what he can do. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, Gallman right now, this is his do or die. Like, if he doesn't step it up and he doesn't come up with his viable option with Deion Lewis there, yeah. it's going to be see, Deion Lewis. And cut for leak. I don't see Gallman. I see Hillman. Hillman, yeah. Hillman's definitely would be the one. Well, he says Gallman. Him. Brown says if leak is here, Gallman's gone. I think if leak is here, Hillman's gone. Hillman would be the one that's gone, not Gallman. You know what I'm saying? But this is also an important year for Gallman, too. You know, Hillman didn't show enough in his rookie year out of Rutgers to even make an impact, except in the preseason. But we saw what he could do. He, I mean, he had some. He played some during the season. He scored a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, he was he was he was fumbling the ball exactly. But um, man, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt teams like the Giants, teams like the Jets. 
you know, that don't have that necessarily the depth and certain skill positions that you can really showcase in the preseason. Wide receiver, um, at corner even, at running back. You know, we know what we have at running back for the most part. Leak, yeah. Brown, Al asked, uh, are they keeping four pure tailbacks? Well, I think with Leak, I think when you look at Leak, you look at somebody who, and the reason why I think it's okay to keep a fourth is because you have, you know, you have Barkley, Lewis, and Gallman are just going to be running backs, catch the ball, running backs. They're not going anywhere else. Leak, I think you throw on special teams also. So he plays a dual role. So, yeah, you could look at him and say we're keeping a fourth tailback, but Leak is the only one of those four guys they're going to let go return kicks and stuff. Yeah. They're not putting Deion Lewis or, Sha- or Saquon Barkley return. How many kick returners have the Giants gone through in the last two or three seasons? Man? It's like every week, boom, boom, new kick return. And then they're bringing guys in off the streets, and it's just – yeah, funny a guy they had to Beckham back there because they couldn't get anybody yeah. else to – Cody Core is the guy I like the best for the Giants on special teams last year, man. We brought him in from Cincinnati. They picked him up. And he came in. That guy really made an impact on the Giants special teams. I think it's going to be between him and Leaks and those guys to come in there and run the special teams for us. Joe Judge obviously will know what he's doing in that department. He'll know who to put back there and what to do with him. Hey, oh, this is the last thing I'll say. We'll close out the preseason, though, because I want to get to the last topic, and we're in the last few minutes. If I'm a undrafted free agent going to camp, and most of them have agents when they get to camp. I'm mm-hmm. telling my agent to negotiate with the team to let them be able to film some sort of the practices, maybe if it's just the plays they're involved in, so they could put something on tape that if they get cut, they could send to other teams. Like they got that's what I'm asking. If I'm an undrafted free agent, even if even if it's just the plays I'm involved in, but put something on tape that I could send around to show mm-hmm. what I would do in practice because they're at an unfair advantage now. So, But I want to get to – Kevin asked the question in the first 10 minutes of the show that I'd like to bring up, and I'd also like to go first if that's okay on on this. Kevin asked, do we think there will be a season? And, here, and I had time to think about this during the show, and I was thinking to myself, Kevin, in my opinion on this, and I'll let everyone chime in, I think a lot of whether the NFL will play this year or not is going to be dictated by MLB, NBA, and NHL. Because I feel like if the, those three sports are all starting first, a good month in advance of real games, if all three of those sports have to shut down due to outbreaks, you will not see football this year. I firmly believe that they will dictate. Because, you know, a lot of people are on Facebook like, oh, baseball had 35 tests. Look, they shouldn't play. 35 tests out of 1,700 is not bad. That's a little overdramatic. You know, it's not like that. If you had told me they had 1,000 positives, I'd have been like, calm down here. But the percentage, I think you're going to – I think the NFL has a distinct advantage here of getting to see all three of those sports play for 30 days before they even start. And I think that is will determine. I think if you see beginning of September – that NHL played okay, NBA got through their finish okay, MLB is chugging along, then, of course, they'll play, right? Anybody mm-hmm. disagree with that? I mean, I, I, I disagree. No, I mean, that's as simple as it gets. I mean, these are the, those three sports are basically the, giving the NFL I – don't, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way. They're the test dummies. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I think – listen, listen, guys. I think there's, there's two parts to this. First – the testing, as we've gone over, they're going to have more tests because more tests are available, especially to the sports players. I mean, they're getting – they have, you know, thousands of tests right there for them ready to take almost every day or every two days. So it's a lot different from me and you that have to go get a test and wait, you know, eight days to get our results back or something crazy like that. If the tests, just because they're positive, doesn't mean that – they cannot play within a certain time either. So th- we're not saying because they tested positive, they're out for the year. We're not mm-hmm. saying that either. So does the sickness that they get from it, how does it affect them? Does it keep them out for 14 days? Does it, uh, if them three players get really sick, does that hurt your team chances to win? Those are the things that I would be interested in. Does it make a team fold? I because- can tell you what could put the season on halt right away in any sport. And I don't want this to happen, God forbid, because I don't wish ill will on anybody. If one of these professional athletes contracts the COVID disease while playing and that athlete dies from it, <sighs> season will be shut down right away. Yeah. Well, you know, 
Well, you know, the Detroit Lions, I think I'm <clears throat> right in saying this. I may not. He was returning. He was a punt returner or a kick returner. He got killed on the field. Football didn't stop. I mean, so. That was I a mean, freak accident. Uh, it did happen. A guy got paralyzed. Catching a tight end for the Patriots got paralyzed during the game. Right, but, but that's the nature of the business. But, right. all, but all I'm trying to say, Jim, is there are some tragic things that happen in sports, and it doesn't shut down the sport. The difference here is that other people can catch this thing. Right. You know, like you say, that's the biggest difference. So what I'm interested to see is what happens with the teams. Do they get sick? Do they all get sick? It doesn't shut down that team. That's when I will get very worried. Because I think in, if you in, if you think about it, because of the sports, of the major sports, you know, the four major sports, football has the most athletes on the sideline than any other sport. You know, basketball is 10, 12, 14 guys. Baseball is 26. Hockey is, you know, 20, whatever it is. Football's 50-something on the sidelines. And they're all touching each other and sweating and tackling each other and bumping into each other and breathing on each other because you can't wrap them in plastic or they can't breathe. They can't play. Nothing will spread as fast as it will in football. Mm-mm. Football shoo, spread like that. Most but, contact. Oh yeah, and that's that's where it's that's where it's going to be iffy. But on that note, I do want to touch base on some things we have coming up this week, because if that's right, because we have some exciting stuff coming up this week. So, if you're a boxing fan, then you know there's two huge names in boxing when it comes to outside the ring: Bob Arum and Don King. We got Bob Arum. Max stussed him out, sat on his lawn, waited for him to get home. I don't know how he did it. I, I can't promise you the guy won't come on and hang up on us. I have no idea. But he got Bob Arum to come on on Tuesday. That's awesome. And there's one in him and Don King. And I don't know how much Don King is involved anymore because I don't hear his name as much as I used to back in the Tyson heydays. But as big as it gets, there's no big. It would be like getting Brian Cash. I mean, it's, you know. It's as big as it gets. So he's coming on this week. <clears throat> Tomorrow, he's coming on Tuesday. Tomorrow, we're going to poke a little fun at Giancarlo Stanton, who not only can't keep himself healthy, but now he's trying to take out his own players. Good line oh, Tanaka is fine, by the way. 30 yeah, for 30, you know, breaking news. He's, he's fine. fine. He's fine, but <laughs> maybe keep everyone away from Stanton might be a good plan until the season starts. Because it how do you and I gotta I got we're not gonna get in say, but how in the world do you possibly in basically live scrimmage almost batting practice hit the ball right back at the pitcher? So, but we'll talk that happens, man. We'll what do you mean? That what tomorrow. You mean? I don't want to waste tomorrow's show, but I'm taking I, off work so I can stay for the show tomorrow. All I saw up and down the Facebook was Yankee fans saying, Oh, now he just wants to, everyone to sit with him on the DL. So, you know, we'll talk <laughs> about that tomorrow. So, we got Bob Arum coming up on Tuesday, which is a big deal. We got we're going to talk all sports tomorrow. We got Yankees. We got basketball. We got football, football, some NBA, some soccer. We're debuting a brand new website this week, which I promise you is top of the line. People are going to be excited. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doing some new show formats. We got stuff coming up like, you know, this day in sports, this day. We got a lot of different things coming up we're going to be unveiling on the next couple of weeks. Also, we're talking to some other people who might be coming along for the ride as far as like joining the big guy sports as far as other things. So we have a lot of things in the work. We're always looking to improve and hopefully sports keeps playing so we don't have to halt or talk about game shows or whatever because you've seen how our game show episode went. Yeah. So, you know, anyway, <laughs> it is what it is. But we have a lot of good stuff this week. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, Mac is off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which means he's going to text me 100 times and I'm going to text him. And we'll go back and forth some this week because we do that every week. So that's fun. This is like behind the scenes. Like one day, you know, down the line 10 years from now when ESPN does a 30 and 30, the big guy sports network, that'll sure be, they'll dramatize that like really like big time. Like instead of us just having like our text book, text message disputes, it'll be like Jim once went to Mac out with a shotgun. <laughs> Mac did not come outside because, you know, they dramatize it up. They need viewers, you know, oh, show like me outside your house and pretend they have ring video footage or something. You know how it is, yeah. Yeah. you know, maybe, you know, Matt, 
who we can all congratulate on the air, got a promotion at work, but he's decided to stay with the network. He hasn't, <laughs> they haven't offered him enough cheese yet to pack everything else. Cheddar, yeah. So he's, you know, he might once in a blue moon come on on the weekdays. We got to see. But, you know, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, Michael says today's date in Mets history signed the Mets signed Cleon Jones. See, there see? you go. See? Right off the bat. So we are done for the weekend. We hope everyone had a safe 4th of July and that everybody made it home last night and didn't get in any trouble, of course, right? We don't want the fans to get in trouble. Yeah, no. Uh, you know, it should be it should be a good week. And I will tell you this real quick. We'll talk tomorrow about the Mets are opening up the baseball season home against the Braves. And also MLB has announced that the complete schedule with dates and times will be out this week. Excellent. Hey, a quick PSA for everybody at home. Do not try to breathe in your coffee while you're drinking it. The lungs don't like that. And you'll have to- oh, yeah, yeah. You can't do stuff like that. You can't do so. And uh, I think Mac will probably attend some uh, – we'll get some good Yankee insight as Mac, I'm sure, will attend some uh, Yankee press uh, conferences and phone calls and all that other good stuff. And but we got a lot of stuff coming up. Keep an eye out. Like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Check out the website, although know that it's getting replaced this week. We've brought on some new writers. We have a lot of writers coming in on board, so we're going to have a lot of articles. That's why we're moving to a new website with new content. Um, we're always looking if someone's interested in getting involved or being a sponsor or doing, you know, advertising. Hit us up. We always yeah. have room. A lot of good things, a lot of new programming stuff in the next couple of weeks that will be unveiled and uh I guess that's it. I guess everyone enjoy their Sunday. Be safe. And, um, you know, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. It's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.